Welcome to Martini Time. It's a beautiful day here in Blackstone, the center of the world, but then you too are the center of the world. Ah, oh, that gets my throat wet. I just watched uh, The Shape of Water. Uh, I don't know if you've seen that movie or not. It really was came out last year and it uh, really got a lot of uh, uh, likes. <laughs> I, don't, I think it won some Oscars, but uh, I've been wanting to see it, and uh, we, find my, we finally got the, the disc and, and watched it, and um, it's a poem. It's a visual metaphor, uh, so it's very hard for me to uh, translate it into words. I think that's the point. Uh, a poem... Uh, can't be translated into prose, uh, and and the shape of water can't be translated into form, uh, into objects, unless you freeze it. Unless you freeze the water, then it has a shape. You see. But water, so I thought I would just uh, play with this metaphor a little bit. Um, to see where it goes for a few minutes. Of course, the story basic is that uh, this uh, fish man was captured in the Amazon uh, where the natives thought it was a god. And it was in the 50s and they brought in the uh, uh, scientists uh, and the military brought him back uh, to a lab where they could experiment, see what the hell they, see what they had. And uh, there was a Russian spy uh, scientists there. This is during the Cold War, so the Russians wanted it. And so, but this girl, this cleaning lady, uh, was a, who was a, a mute, could not speak, she could hear. And uh, kind of a homely cleaning lady. And she fell in love with him. And so she es escaped him. <laughs> She got him out, put him in her bathtub, like a little love grotto. And then uh, finally the, uh, the bad uh, military guy, you know, there's always one, found out where she was and he was going to kill it. And so he found it, you know, I'm telling you the story, but anyway, uh, the fish man, the fish god, and the girl uh, end up in the ocean and she gets gills. She already had marks on her neck. Uh, and so she gets gills and they live forever after in the ocean. But anyway, that's just, yeah, that's just the outline, the objective outline, and that's not what it's about. Uh, so that's the, the, uh, uh, the movie's kind of like The Shape of Water because you can't really give a shape to it. You can't really pin it down. You can't really objectify it and say, oh, I know what it is, it's this, 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 and this, you see. That's what they wanted to do to the fish god. They wanted to kill it and dissect it and see what made it work, you see. So when you give something a shape, you kill it. When you define the world, uh, you kill it. So. I think the message of the story, the, the uh, meaning of the story, which is going to take any shape you want, is that if you give something a shape, you destroy it. So the essence of life, uh, you could say it's love, but the essence of life is a mystery. It's unshapeable. <laughs> it has no shape. It's the formless. It takes every shape. This is water takes the shape. All right, so this this is this is water. Yeah, I mean, it's a martini, but it takes the shape of this glass. Now it's taken the shape of me. So water takes the shape of the form it's in. You see. But what's the water? Well, you can't know water unless it's got a shape. You understand what I mean? You don't see, you just can't see water. What you see is water with a shape. Even in the ocean, it's got the shape of the ocean. 
It's in a raindrop. It's got the shape of a raindrop. It's in a martini glass. It's got the shape of a martini glass. If it's in a tear, it's got the shape of a tear. So water takes the shape of whatever form it's in. So you've got the form is water, the water is form. They're separate, but they're the same. And I think that I'm just, as I talk to you about this, uh, I even think of Zen. There's the Heart Sutra. And the Heart Sutra of Zen is chanted in the Zen monasteries. And one of the, and if you boil it all down, it's form is emptiness, emptiness is form. And form is emptiness, emptiness is form. So what if you change to water for emptiness? So form is water, water is form. The shape of water is formless, and yet it has form. So there is a, there is a mystery here in the sense that uh, you know the essence of everything is water, but you can't see the water because all we see is the form of water. So I'm the form of water, you're the form of water, everything is the form of water, but we've lost our ability to see the water and connect with the water, you see. So when the water that has no form connects with the water the for of the other form, you see, that's love. That's the unity of the water. The water recognizes water. But when we identify with the form, we don't see the water. We just see the form. It's defined and it's objectified. It's an object. And as soon as we make the world into objects, into forms, we make ourselves into a form. So now you've got my favorite thing. So now you've got emptiness is form, form is emptiness, form is water, water is form. You separate them, now you have form and form. <laughs> so now I'm an object and I see you as an object. And we're going to clash, you see. Why do we clash? We want to get back to the water, but we can't because we're frozen in the forms that we define, you see. So we define ourselves into forms, and what we long for is the water that is the unity of all, the essence of us all. Remember, water is a metaphor, see. Buddhism calls it emptiness, but even that is a word, you see. So this indefinable form, this indefinable water, takes the shape. So how do you recognize the water in form? You recognize the water in form when you recognize the water in yourself. So then the water in yourself and the water in the other forms is the same water, and yet they are two. So the water is the one, and form is two, you see. Water is the one, the totality, but it transcends the forms. You can't see water unless it has a form. You see, but we separate. We don't. We can, we've lost the ability to see the water, the essence of form. All we see is form, and all we see is the forms we define, the known. And where does that definition come from? Our memory, our conditioning, our culture, our religion, our ideology. You see, so all the forms we see are really just projections of our own conditioning. So we project the definitions of the world out there and then either chase it or run from it. All the while, we're really looking for the water that is one before it becomes the many drops, you see. Every drop is the form of water, but none of the drops are water, you see. They're all water, but they're not. And this is the mystery. Uh, it's ambiguous. And logic and prose can't go there. So we can only go there through metaphor and movies, like The Shape of Water. So even though I described the movie, uh, I didn't describe the movie. 
because it's really pointing to the water that's in us all that has no shape. The water before it becomes shape. In Zen it's called, who are you before your parents were born? Who are you before you took a form? You are the water. And that is our original nature. And in Buddhism it's called awareness. Awareness is the water. Awareness, consciousness takes the shape of the form it's in. So everything is consciousness in the sense that everything is the form of water. Everything is the form of consciousness. But you can't see or know consciousness as an object you see. You can only be consciousness. And when you be consciousness, you see consciousness everywhere. When you be water, you be water everywhere. <laughs> Thanks for dropping in. <laughs>